Hello and welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at SysCloud, which is a fantastic backup system for Google Workspace. I'm here with my colleague, uh, Apps Events Technical Lead, Peter Horner. How are you doing, Peter? Hi, Dan. Yeah, I'm really good. Thank you. How are you? Good. Thanks. Good. So let's jump into SysCloud. It's a great um, way to back up uh, everything on Google, including Google Classroom. We're going to talk about the features. We're going to do a demo. Um, the great thing about it is it's got flat, low pricing, which I'll mention later. Um, and we found it a dream to use. We work with all the backup systems, uh, and SysCloud is the one we're recommending now to schools. So, Peter, do you want to take it away? Absolutely. So, the first thing you can see here is the dashboard for SysCloud. And I think you'd agree, this has got a really clean, modern user interface, which is really simple and easy to use, especially compared against some of the competitors out there for different backup products. So, as we click into here, we have current backup progress. So this shows uh, our system we're backing up, how much data is currently being protected, and whether there are any errors or not. As we scroll further down, we can see, again, our total amount of data we're backing up and protecting with SysCloud. We can see how many days we've been protected for. So this is how many days we've been running backups for. Uh, we can see the number of admins in our system and the number of restores we've completed. And then further down here, we can see a breakdown of data usage by app and also by domain as well. And then as we go a bit further down, we can see our backup health status. So we can see uh, what days we've performed backups on, whether there are any errors or not. On this view, it's all green, so no errors here. And lastly, just further down here, we can also see backup trends. Uh, so this would show us you know, how much our data changes uh, between different days. But the key thing about a backup system is how easy restores are. And you can achieve a run a restore by going to archives. And then from here, we can select which domain we want to restore from. So on this system, we've got a couple of domains set up, but let's select uh, this one in this case. Yep. And now we can select a user. So we've only got a couple of demo users on our system here today. If we had more, we could easily search for more users just by typing in a username into the filter there and then quickly find that user. So let's select James in this example. And here for James, we can see which apps we're currently backing up for him. So we're backing up Google Drive, Contacts, Gmail, uh, legacy sites and calendar. Uh, let's have a look at Google Drive in this case. So we can see James's Google Drive here. If I expand this, it will show the folder structure. So you can just browse it just as if you were in Google Drive. You can search for files and folders up here. Uh, you can filter on items. And you can also, of course, change which day you want to look at. So you can go further back in time if you need to go back and restore an item uh, that may have been deleted or maybe this user has been deleted. And when it comes to achieving a restore, all you need to do is, let's just select a single item in this case. From here, we can select restore. We can select which account we want to restore to. Uh, we can also select to restore all of the sharing permissions. So when that file comes back, it will still be shared with everyone who previously had access. Now that's really that's a really big thing, isn't it? Because obviously you can just back up and restore everything, but if you have to then do a whole bunch of work afterwards, it, it just it, it it makes it a lot more effort. Absolutely, yeah, it's a huge time saver uh, in doing that. And the other thing you can do here is restore it to a new folder to make it super easy for that user to find it, and then simply press restore. Now the other option we have here is we can also export a file from here, so. If we select a file again and then select export, this just gives us a really quick download of that file. So we don't have to restore it back to the user's area. We can restore it for that user, check it's restored properly, and then reshare it to them. Great. So that's how Google Drive looks. Let's go back to our archive now and take a look at Gmail. So again, in Gmail, we can select uh, the app here. And then this will show us a view of that user's inbox. As you can see here on the left-hand side, we've got all the labels that we're using. If 
for categorizing uh, their emails. And we can see their emails here as well. And if we select a message, we can select restore. Again, just as before, it will restore those labels. And we can optionally also add a custom label to that. So for instance, we can add restored as a label, making it super easy for that user to then find that message they might be missing. Yeah. And again, we can export a message. So that's just an individual message or item in Google Drive. But of course, you can also restore the entire inbox or multiple labels here as well, or multiple folders in Drive. So you could use it just for restoring an individual item or if a user has been deleted. And let's not forget, when you delete a user on Google Workspace, that data disappears after 20 days. So if that's happened, then you could use a tool like this to easily and quickly restore all the items associated with that user back to a restored user on your Google Workspace domain. Then right. we go over to jobs. This is where we can configure our backup jobs. So we've got a couple of test jobs in here, which we created earlier. And if I select this job, it would just show me a few more details about it. And then if we select edit, you can see how quickly and easily it is to set up a new job. So in here, we can give this job a name. Then we can select uh, the service we want to back up here, in this case, Google Workspace. Yep. And then we can define the scope of the backup. So in this case, we're backing up just two users. But we can easily add more users to here. We can either select to back up our entire domain. We can select particular OUs. So if you just want to back up staff, you can just select your staff OU and automatically back up all the staff who get added into that OU. Or you do also have a flexibility of choosing individual users as well. And once you're finished, just press start backup and then that data will start being protected as well. Fantastic. And then lastly, let's have a quick look at reports. So reports will give us uh, more insights and analytics in terms of what backups and restores are being performed. So it gives you reassurance that you know backups are happening every day and you can also monitor restores in here as well. So that's the major features, but it's one feature we've not discussed yet, which I think is fairly unique in SysCloud. And that is, it can also back up Google Classroom. So we don't have it on our demo today, but with a Google Classroom backup, uh, rather than just backing up with files and items in Google Drive, SysCloud can also back up the assignments, posts, and materials which are assigned through Google Classroom. So if a classroom ever does get deleted uh, by a user, or maybe even just an individual assignment has been deleted, and a teacher has no way of getting that back, you can use SysCloud to then restore that data back to that user. And you can search based on the owner of a class, uh, a co-teacher or students in a class and find that class on your domain and then restore those items. And I think that's fairly unique in all of the backup products I've looked at anyway. It is. So Peter, thank you very much for that, that demo. Um, just quickly the pricing. So uh, the pricing is very, very simple, which, which is really welcome. It's $12 per staff member per year. You can convert that to pounds. It's roughly nine pounds or uh, 10 euros 50 per, per staff member per year. We can bill in all currencies uh, and fix the price in your currency. Students are free, so you just pay for the staff members. And it includes 75 gigabytes of storage per user per staff member. So this gets put into the pool. So one user can have less, the other can have more. And the Google Classroom feature is an additional $5 per staff member per year. That's that's optional. And like Peter said, um, it, it really is, is good for just restoring a classroom with the same feed and looking exactly the same as it was, but it's not essential. Um, get in touch if you're interested to look at SysCloud. Apps Events can set up a free trial. Uh, we're a trusted partner for schools in the UK, the US, and international schools. So thank you very much, Peter, uh, for a great demonstration. My pleasure. Good to see you, Dan.